Greetings, One Buoy Bahati here, One Buoy Made It. Today, I'm going to do part one, getting started on the Afghan or the Infinity Loom. Now, when I'm demonstrating something for you, what I like to do is get ahead of you. And by that, I mean that any project I demonstrate, I like to have made at least one of them, or if not two or three, so that when I'm explaining or demonstrating it to you, I've already done it, so I kind of know what I'm talking about, and I can explain it a lot better. When I was working on the Afghan loon over the last few days, and I decided that I needed to come and show you how to get started, I realized I needed two of these. Now the round looms, I have lots and lots of round looms, but I only have one Afghan or infinity loom. And so in order to get you started, I had to take my project off because I needed to start and show you from the beginning with an empty loom, which let me know I need two of these because I would like to have my project going at the same time and any problems that I run into, then I can tell you I'll be ahead of you and I can tell you what to look out for and things like that. So I decided to order another loom today and I wanted a wooden one. So I uh, had a question about the loom I was about to order from Sinwood Looms. And so I called the company and who should answer the phone but Miss Sinwood herself. I believe her name is Cindy. And what a nice lady and what a helpful lady. Did you ever meet people that sometimes I talk to people and I'm 70, but I'll be talking to them and I think, Ooh, I want to be like them when I grow up. Well, she was just that sweet. So she answered my questions and she also helped me to understand. One of the things I asked her about was how to make sure that the Afghan didn't curl or roll up or become wonky. And so she gave me an idea of how to get started and uh, told me about the pattern that she was working on. And so that is what I'm going to demonstrate to you right now. So I'm going to go over, um, change the angle of my camera and go over to my work table so that you can see me get started, okay? I do want to add that if you're new to loom knitting, I wouldn't suggest that this be the first project that you do. I would suggest that you make a hat, use make something on the round looms, um, just to get you going there. But I believe if this was going to be your very first project, I think you might find loom knitting a little frustrating and then you might not come back to it again. So I'm suggesting that if you are new to loom knitting, then please start with the round looms and make yourself a hat or something like that before you start working on this. And then you'll have a better idea of what you're doing and it's going to be a lot more fun. Okay, I'm going to go demonstrate how to get started on this loom now. Before we get started on our afghan, I want to explain to you about the pattern we're going to be using so that you'll know where we're going. Now, this is a pattern that was suggested to me yesterday when I spoke to Cindy from Cindy Wood Looms and I was asking her about how to make sure that our afghans didn't roll in or curl or look wonky. And so she was telling me about how she did the afghans and she had said that she started with for all four alternating rows. Now the number four is going to be important here. Four alternating rows in the beginning. A knit, a purl, a knit, a purl. In the beginning of the afghan. Four alternating rows. Knit, purl, knit, purl. Once the afghan is the length that we want it to be, we're going to do four alternating rows at the end. Knit, purl, knit, purl, uh, knit, purl, knit, purl at the end. Now, in between the four alternated rows and the end of four alternated rows, we're going to basically just knit, 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 knit. Just knit, just knit, basically. Now, I say basically because she told me she was working on an afghan and she was getting a very beautiful edge by beginning and ending 
each row, these are the knitted rows that are basically knitted. They're knitted, knitted, knitted. But I said basically because the first four stitches of every row is alternated. Knit, purl, knit, purl. And the end row, at the end of the row is knit, purl, knit, purl. So in order to remember to knit, purl, knit, purl at the beginning of each row and to knit purl knit purl at the end of each row it's going to be important to mark the rows but you're only going to do the first four pegs because the rest of the row for the entire afghan is just going to be knit 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 now if you're starting your afghan and you want to do a full afghan, you're going to use all of these pegs because you want an afghan. When I measured the full afghan, it came to a little over 100 inches, which means it's going to be pretty wide, like a bed size afghan. So if you're going to be making the full length of the afghan, then where you end is going to be right behind where we're beginning. So if these are the first four that you're going to uh, start loom knitting, then the ones right behind are going to be the last ones because when we go all around and come back around, if we start here and come back around, this is where the end is going to be. So these pegs right here, we're going to leave alone because we want to have an opening there so that we can open our afghan and we won't or otherwise we'll have a double afghan now i don't know if you can see i have a peg that's missing right here it just broke off but at least the good news is that it broke off at a really in a really good place because i probably wouldn't have used that peg anyways because i'm going to start right here so the first thing we're going to do is mark those four pegs at the beginning and at the end of the row. Now, I'm a person that loves to use nail polish, but for this, um, I'm going to be using these ties right here. And these are hair ties that I got at a beauty supply store. Uh, whatever you want to use to mark your pegs, the first four pegs, and I do suggest that you mark them, then rubber bands, the nail polish, the ties, whatever you want to use. But, um, I also suggest that you have a different color for the knit and a different color for the pearl. So what I'm going to do, for instance, is I'm going to make my knit pegs orange. So when I see orange, orange to me means that I'm going to knit that one. And then I'm going to use blue to mean pearl. So I'm going to, so that's the knit, that's the pearl. I need another knit, which is orange because orange to me is knit and then a blue here for a pearl. And then I'm going to do the same thing behind it because once I go around, this is where I'm going to end. So I want to have a orange here to let me know to knit. I'm going to have a blue next to that one to let me know to pearl. And then another orange here for knit. And then a blue for pearl okay so that's what mine looks like there if you can see i've got mine marked okay so once we have it marked now we are ready to start our afghan and so the yarn i'm going to be using today is this very bright pink right here this is Lions Brand Hometown. It is a bulky number six weight, which is about as bulky as you can get. And this color is called Neon Pink. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start by making the loop. So however you make a loop, you make a loop in your yarn. And once you have your loop, we're going to put the loop on the first peg and we're going to tighten it and we're going to put the tail right in this trench right here so that the tail is out of the way and in the bottom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start e-wrapping. We're just going to e-wrap 
Erap. We won't be doing anything with these markers, the marked pegs, using that for a while yet. Because we got to do the first rows of one row knit, one row purl, one row knit, one row purl first before we start using these. So right now, all we're going to do is Erap. Just keep in mind that when you Erap, you want to make sure when you start off that this yarn as it attaches, that is attaching to each stitch, is on the inside. So we're going to e-wrap, e-wrap, and you may need to use your finger to help hold the yarn down so it doesn't jump off until we get the first few rows in place. So we're going to just e-wrap all around here and just follow the path and just keep e-wrapping. And I'm going to e-wrap. And we have started our afghan. And we want to just keep going, following the path. Following the path. Let me get this out of the way here. And let's see. Oops. And there we go. Here you go. We're gonna just keep following the path. And e wrap. And I'm going to go the whole way. I want to make a really big afghan. I've never made one before like that, so I'm excited. Okay, so just. Follow the yellow brick road or the green brick road or whatever color bloom you may have. Just keep following the path. And you may need to use your fingers, like I said in the beginning, to help make sure the yarn doesn't pop off. And, oops. Okay, and now we're coming to the end. And now, okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to push these, try to push them down a little bit because we got to make room for the next row because we're going to go back now and make the second row so that we have our, our knit row to pull up, have a bottom row to pull up over the top row. So. Let's push this down. All right. Okay. All right. We have room for our next row. So, all right. So we end it here. Let's turn this like this. Okay, so, all right, so we did an E-wrap here, and we're doing an E-wrap here. Now, what we want to do is we want to go back, but we want to make sure we keep the attaching yarn on the inside or where that attaching yarn is. So, we're going to go back the other way with our top Our top, <laughs> mine jumped off with our top layer, our top row. Now holding this in your lap, it is a little easier than doing it on a table like this, holding it. Um, just gives you a little more flexibility and it's just easier when you're holding it in your lap.
And now we're coming up to the end or the beginning, however you want to look at it. And we now have two loops on each peg. And just as we would do in any other project to get the E-wrap knit stitch, we're going to pull the bottom loop up over the top loop. And we're just gonna go all around pulling the bottom loop up over the top loop. We're not gonna bother any of those markers. They're gonna come later. We're gonna use them later. Right now, all we're gonna do is go back around now that we have two loops on each peg and pull the bottom over the top. Then we're going to come back and we're going to do a row of pearl. Here I have started my first row of pearl on this loom. It is a different experience from having used the round looms mostly. It is a different experience because you're going to find you're going to be twisting and turning your pick in different ways in order to do the pullover that you need to do because of all the curves and how this loom is shaped uh, so differently and trying to get in um, to some small spaces. The stitches are the same. So you're just going to have to use however you need, whatever you need to do. For instance, we're going to do a pearl. It's still the same stitch. You're going to lay that down and you're going to scooch it up. Then you're going to get that loop and then pull everything off and put that loop back on and then tighten it up a little bit. And then we're gonna go to the second and so forth. It's the same pearl stitch. It's just that it is um, different. I'm not gonna say is difficult. I'm just gonna say it's a different experience and you are gonna get used to while using this loom in how you need to hold your pick in order to get into the, the small spaces and to do the stitches that you need to do. But it is the same stitch. We're gonna go inside, scooch up the yarn, pull up the loop, take everything off and put the loop back on. So that is where we are right now. We have started our Afghan project on the Afghan or the Infinity Loom. If there are any questions, if you feel that I went too fast in some parts or it seemed that I skipped something that you really need to know, then please ask me. I am going to be working on my Afghan along with you. And like I said, I'm gonna to try to get ahead of you so that when I see something coming up or something that I think I need to alert you about, I'll be able to do that. But it is my first Afghan too. Any questions that you have, if I can't answer them, I will be sure to try to find somebody who can help me with the answers so that I can share them with you. Now the Afghan project seems like a long-term project to me, although I know some of you will have the Afghan completed by tomorrow at noon. But for others of us, it's a it's going to take a while. So in between and while working on the Afghan, I am going to be doing other tutorials. More than a few people have asked that I do a sewing project. So the sewing project may be the next video that I do. So in the meantime, in between time, I ask that you just stay wonderful and be safe. And I will see you soon. Peace.